There is no debate that Otile Brown holds a revered status in the Kenyan entertainment scene. He's been hailed as a living legend, once reigning as the most streamed male artist on Boomplay in the country and amassing over 20 million views on six of his music videos on YouTube. His collaborations with Tanzanians, Nigerians, Rwandas, and Kenya's artists further solidified his influence. If Otile Brown had gracefully stepped back from the limelight, he would have been remembered as one of the industry's most dominant and respected figures. However, his continuous self-sabotage displayed through online antics and embarrassing behaviors has tarnished his legacy. Mujinga, huyo hata mfai hata msikilize. Yaani kawe ni fan wa Otile unafojichukia kutoka sahi. Hello, my name is Chief Okuzo from Plug TV. Even his most ardent fans now question his place in the music world. Diving into his career, one wonders if he's intentionally destroying his reputation through his words and actions. Otile Brown's downfall can be traced back in 2022, shortly after his tour in America when he abruptly shifted his musical style. Initially known as the King of Zouk in Kenya, his music infused Arabic and Swahili vibes with hits like Deja Vu earning him widespread acclaim. However, in 2022, Otile Brown decided to pivot towards a different musical direction, transitioning from Swahili to English. According to Otile Brown, he believed that Swahili songs weren't getting the recognition he needed abroad. So, he decided to sing in English with the aim of capturing their international market. Otile mentioned that the language barrier was one of the main obstacles for Kenyan music to compete favorably with English language music. He felt that Kenyan musicians needed to adopt to music that will resonate well with foreign audiences. So kitu kinachotulimi kinachotulimi sisi kama wasanii wa East Africa ni nini? Ni lugha. Mimi nikijaribu kupinda kwa mtu wa East Africa inakuwa ni kama yani atuelewe nini atuelewe kizungu and all that kwa sababu watu wameridhika na Kiswahili and all that but um, tukitaka kutusua kimataifa lazima tupinde kidogo yani lugha lazima tu, tu nini consequently he released several songs in english including i need you and bowling among others however his fans weren't prepared for this shift and criticized his english songs considering them substandard compared to his Swahili ones. Even his former producer Dr. A.D. expressed disappointment over Otile's transition to English songs, believing he was more authentic when singing Zouk with Tarab music vibes. Ah, yeah. uh, kuna uh, kuna umbo ambao Otile Brown aliimbia pale beach, pale Mombasa, it was Pakate. Eh, Pakate. Mm. Eh, hey, hey. Ulikuwa unampatia vibe za kitarabu tarabu hii sana. Yeah. Eh, alikuwa msanii mzuri sana wakati akiimba hizo. Mm. Eh, akiimba Zouk mm. na akiimba hiyo ki Ka, eh, that is Swahili fusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Ye na ka ki, ki, ki Arabic music hiyo. Yeah, tarabu yeah. tarabu. Yeah. Despite facing criticism, Otile saw those opposing his music change as hindrances to progress. He vented his frustrations on Instagram, sharing a snippet of his new song I Need You and criticizing his fans for no longer inspiring him to create good music. And some of you are like, no, the problem is like you changed. And I'm like, so you wanted me to remain the same? Isn't that boring? You know, are we, are we, aren't we, aren't we supposed to move forward and not move backwards? You know what I mean? Why are you so ex- obsessed with the fact that you're so obsessed with Swahili to the point like you don't want me to do anything else? I've proven that already. You know what I mean? I've proven proven my capability. You all know my capability. I'm one of the best Swahili writers in the game. Why don't you want me to show you some other stuff? Otile Brown remained confident that his English songs would elevate his music career globally. He included these songs in his recent released album 
even threatening to quit music if the album didn't perform well. On Instagram, he stated that he had invested heavily in the project, which features tracks based on his personal experiences. I got too much game on my upcoming album, real life experience, and it has to make it to at least the top three best albums in Africa, just to be fair, or else I am quitting music, he said. Shock on him, Otile Brown learned the hard way about not counting his chickens before they hatch when his album Grace didn't meet his expectations upon release. Expressing his disappointment, he admitted that the album's performance fell far below what he had hoped for. Um, no, not as I expected, just to keep it real, you know. Like, expect, unko expect, were your expectations high, am unko mezi limit? Mm. It was high, but I was prepared too, because I know what is happening in the industry right now. There's a lot going on, you know, there's a lot of distraction. Sikama, two years ago, or three years ago, when I dropped my first album, you know. Now the question arises, will he follow through on his earlier promise to quit music if his album flopped? Only time will tell if he sticks to his words. Diving deep into his music career, Fans are wondering if this marks the end of Otile Brown, especially after parting ways with his former manager Noriega. Their partnership was instrumental in Otile Brown's rise to prominence in the Kenyan entertainment scene. However, things took a turn in June 2023 when Otile announced their split after six years of collaboration. While he didn't disclose the reasons at first, speculations swelled among fans. Finally, in February 2024, Otile opened up about the split during an interview with William Tuva, revealing that he felt Noriega wanted to assert his independence, or rather, Noriega wanted to be his own boss. Pengine mwana ambaye pengine mepambana nae, unakutokomba ile concern pengine haipo, ile morali liyokuwa haipo. Ah. Eh, sata, tukio tunapanga vitu, unakutani kama yaani, na msukuma, umenelea. Ah. Surprisingly, Noriega had a different perspective on the breakup. He said that even though they had agreed to part ways amicably, Otile's actions painted a different picture. Contrary to what people might think, Noriega clarified that their relationship was more of a business agreement than just a typical job. Despite this, he expressed disappointment in how Tile handled everything, especially the lack of communication about their split. I didn't realize we needed to issue a press release announcing that we were no longer working together. I found out online just like everyone else. And that's where my disappointment comes from. Noriega explained. Since the split, Otile Brown introduced his new manager Mombi Maina to the public. On Friday, January 5th, 2024, Otile Brown shared the exciting news on his social media pages, expressing his enthusiasm for working with Mombi Maina. But some fans were skeptical about her ability to manage Otile Brown. After scrutinizing her social media pages, they found no evidence of her involvement in the music business. Her photos mostly showed her enjoying an expensive lifestyle, traveling to different holiday destinations. Ever since she was introduced as Otile Brown's new manager, all eyes have been on her. Now the big question is, will she deliver as a manager or will she end up quitting after just a few months? Only time will tell. And when it comes to Otile Brown, controversy seems to follow him everywhere. He's never been one to hold back, no matter who's watching or listening. From his public breakup with Vera Siddika to admitting to self-pleasure when his girlfriend isn't around. Una survive aje nai corona. I'm I'm good man. Tunanyonga tu. Shana ya land gang. Otile anayoka. Tunanyonga tafani. Uki msubiri. Uki msubiri. And even his ongoing feuds with Tanzanian artist the list of controversies goes on and on. But perhaps the dirtiest controversy that really rubbed music lovers the wrong way was when he decided to call out Tanzanian singers, Diamond Platinums and Mboso. 
Back in September 2023, Otile Brown publicly criticized Mboso and Diamond Platinums for allegedly wearing fake jewelry. The Tanzanian artists had proudly displayed their custom-made jewelry on social media, each piece featuring their own faces. They claimed to have spent millions on these pieces without any regrets. However, Otile Brown felt they were deceiving their fans. Through his social media pages, he blasted Diamond Platinums and Boso, saying, With love, punguzeni mabati kwenye shingo or you keep quiet. Mnachokesha. Hao ni watu gani mnanunua chain kwao? Tuelewane. You all can't be talking rich all the time and still rocking fugazi. Inspire game. Ujanja wanini and you all blessed. Chain baada ya miezi kadhaa huioni tena maana imeshika kutu. He went on to ask them to stop flaunting such things as young people would think life is easy. Got youngings thinking that this is easy and now nobody wants to put in work. It's not bad rocking for Gazi. They say fake it till you make it. Tatizo ni, if you have made it but you are rocking it and still running your mouth, you gonna check you for the love of the game, he added. Now, why did Otile Brown start a beef with these two artists? Well, according to what people are saying online, it seems that Otile Brown felt offended because he was denied a collabo by these two artists. In an interview, Mboso revealed that Otile Brown had approached him for a collaboration some time ago. But it didn't work out because Mboso was tied to a musical label owned by Diamond Platinums, and that is the WCB. Sema la moja, naonaga kuna kipindi alisema siju tumemuibia hui Mboso. Yeah. Naonaga wanaga vitu vingi. Uh, Hatujai kuwa washikaji sana, hila nakumbuka lishai kunicheki kwa jiri ya kolabo. Mm. Uh, miaka kaza nyumba, nafikiri mm. badu siki. Uh, Chatizaki nazo DM, mm. alinicheki, lakini nilimpa utaratibu wa, wa kufata, nafikiri siyo alishindo wa kufatilia utaratibu wa viongozi, mini msani, mm. nipo kwenye management, kwa unafutaka tufanya kazi, lazima ufatilie, process, process zikamirishe tufanya kazi. As for the potential collaboration between Otile Brown and Diamond Platinums, Brown mentioned that despite both of them being well-known artists in East Africa, they had never actually met or spoke. He expressed openness to working with Diamond Platinums in the near future. But that's not all. Otile Brown also made a statement that many felt was disrespectful to Tanzania and their artists alike. Firstly, he insinuated that Tanzanian currency was poor and that if he lived in Tanzania, he would live as a king. You know, me, maybe, a house that I'm paying in Kenya here, the money, that I, the rent, if I was in Tanzania, I could be living on a palace. I've heard those stories that uh, housing in Tanzania is very affordable. Because I see you know, some guys with own compounds and I'm like, it's, it's crazy. The, now, Brown also claimed that there were no international artists in East Africa. And this statement was seen as a disrespectful by Diamond Platinum's fans, who demanded that Otile Brown retract his words or face a boycott of his music. However, Otile Brown stood his ground, insisting that all artists in East Africa are all considered local and none of them including Diamond Platinums, who many label as an international artist. Many felt that Otile Brown's music career was in serious trouble, especially after his recent performance at the Raha Fest. His haters seized the opportunity to criticize him even more harshly, especially from Tanzania. Now, during the festival, Otile Brown took to the stage to perform, but things took a turn for the worse when some attendees began heckling him. They shouted for him to leave the stage, but the reason for their hostility remained unclear until it emerged that his fans wanted him to move closer to them as he was performing from a distance. In a video explanation, Otile Brown admitted that he initially went on stage without his ear monitors, essentially for hearing his performance. He had to retrieve them from backstage, causing a delay. Furthermore, he acknowledged 
that some audience members were deliberately planted by his critics to disrupt his performance and cause embarrassment. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to justify everything, anything. You know, I'm a work in, uh, you know, in progress and there's bad days in the office. It happens. When you show kitu kidogo, kineza trigger kitu ambacho ikaribu shonzima. Mwanzo tuwa show neza ribu shonzima and all that. It happens a lot of times. Wasani siki la siku wana have the best shows. So I don't have any problem people booing me. Sina tatizo watu wakini boo mimi. Manani sawa, that's how you feel and I respect it. Kupendwa ni kwa ihari. Ila kama utatua story, ielezea jinsi ilivokuwa, ye unajua kweli kichokuwa kinaendelea. Sema kichokuwa kinaendelea. Don't paint a narrative just because you are looking for clickbait. Now the debate about whether Otile Brown's music career is doomed continues. But the question remains, can we still have faith in his musical future? Hmm? Leave your thoughts in our comment section. That is it for now. Thanks for watching. Let's see you next time. Bye-bye.